Here we go, 10 point quiz tomorrow over this that I went over on the uh, video that I posted on Tuesday, okay? And then this that I um, taught for review yesterday and we'll go over and answer questions today on both ones because um, some of you guys weren't here to ask questions on this. It's gonna be the easiest quiz for me to ever write. I just pull this out and I pick five problems. Okay, so from last night, let's hold off on 13, 14. Because does anybody want to raise their hand nice, high, and proud that I got 13 or I got 14? Yes, that was a challenge. That's the, that's the um, kind of the next level of radical solving. Okay, so let's wait on 13, 14 questions on uh, the others. Well, actually, you know what? Let me do just a quick review. Sometimes, if we had like x equals the square to blah, 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 and I got x equals 4 and x equals negative 2, one of those I talked about yesterday, what, what do we call it? One of those won't work, so it is called a E. Okay, go with lunch. Here we go. Conjugate. No, it's not conjugate. <laughs> Root. Root. Extra. Extra, so extraneous. Extraneous root. Extraneous root is one that kind of happens from changing the degree of the equation. Right now I've got an x to the first. If I square both sides, I get an x to the second. And then that changes the power, change, might change the number of solutions. And in this case, if I plug that back in, can I ever have the square root equal a negative? No. So sometimes you gotta plug, if you get two answers, you might go, ooh. One of these may not work, so I need to plug them both back in and make sure they work. It's an extra step. I know it's a pain in the butt, but you guys can do that. Okay, so besides 13, 14, questions? I forgot this is the incredible questionless year. 47. 47. Okay, so if we take a look at 47. Okay. I don't know why I'm in a good mood today. Yeah, I'm just glad that, I'm hoping that nobody's like stepping in it as we speak. Okay. So on this one, 47, some of the, some of the concern may come from what do I do with this one fourth? Can I take my one fourth times 32? What do I do? Well, can I take one fourth times 32? Well, let's take a look at it. One fourth is simply just one fourth. Is that simply just a 32? No, it's 32 raised to a power. So, uh-uh, hands off. Nope, 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 nope. So you've got to get rid of that one-fourth. So the opposite of one-fourth, we're going to multiply both sides by four, times four, times four. I'm trying to work on my Spanish, so multiply by ocho. I know that was wrong. I just did that to see if anybody was listening to anything that I say. Okay? So now, so now what do I do to both sides? Cubit. Cubit. Because the one-third power is the cube root, or if I multiply, if I raise both sides to the third power, three times one third gives me one. So then I just end up with 32b raised to the fourth power, 64, and there's where I get my b is two. We didn't change um, degree much, so I'm not too worried about an extraneous root. I don't have two. But I'm just going to plug it in real quick just to check. 32 times 2 is 64 raised to the one-third power gives me 4. One-fourth times 4 gives me 1. 
Okay. I have a question mark on number seven. You mad jingler, you. All right. All right. I want to know, we should have all gotten the next step, 20 equals square root of D. I want to know what you guys do to get there. What? Multiply by four, okay? So I'm just trying to figure out the language she used. She's like, okay, that's divided by four. Let's get rid of that layer. I also want you guys to realize that we've got a simple fraction on each side. So all we gotta do is cross multiply. It's gonna give you the same results. Um, sometimes the idea of cross multiplying comes in really handy. So cross multiply, get 20 equals square root of D. And then we can just go ahead and solve from there. Okay, anything else besides 13 or 14? Going once. Going, oh, 10 point quiz over five problems selected at random from these two days. From the stuff we're going over now, or the stuff we assigned Monday and posted a video over on Tuesday. Okay, no theory, no graphing, no, just solving. Okay, were you here yesterday? No. Okay, big reach, Jesse. Video yesterday, I've got it all addressed. Sweet. Okay, so let's talk about 13, 14. I think this is, over. This is, this is fair game because we're going to go over it, we're going to do it. So if I square both sides to get rid of this square root, when I square the left side, I can't just... Oh boy, that's awful. I need to change the brightness on this thing or something. Because you put my white hands in the mix and it doesn't help bring it down anymore. Okay. So if I square this left side, I can't just square the B and square the 2. I can't. The main operation is subtraction. So that takes any exponents out of each, indivi each individual part off the table. So I've got to square this. So then on the left side, I got b minus 2 times b minus 2 equals um, 3b minus 8. Okay. And then we're just going to have to multiply this out and solve it. So I get b squared minus 4b plus 4 equals 3b minus 8. And at this point in time, you should be able to put your critical thinking brain away and just go into autopilot. Okay, so now, since I original, my power B was originally B to the first, now I've got two answers, I'm kind of freaked out, so I'm just going to do this in my head real quick. 3 minus 2 is 1, 3 times 3 minus 8 is 1, square root of 1 is 1, so that's good. 2, 4, yeah, so both work. Sometimes we get an extraneous solution, sometimes we don't. I'm going to speak less on this one. Had a brain fart there. Okay, now, so, the negative four won't work. Why? Sorry. Negative 4 won't work. If I plug it in, I get negative 1 equals the square root of um, 1. So, that's not true. Square roots are always positive. Square roots are always positive. Always, always, always. 
Okay. We can go back to whatever you want. What part of that's tripping you up? Okay. Either day, I'll give you another minute, and then we're going to move on. But for now, I'll just check my text and stuff. Two oh six. I think that's what we. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah, but we also did a two sixteen. <gasps> so okay, okay, okay. So I appreciate you guys asking that because maybe. Um, let's just keep them to both those. Let's just keep them to both those. That's plenty. Okay. But we will start off reviewing. 216. Yeah, I already put the answers up for that, but um, we will review logs right now. So, whiteboards, grab them. Haven't you always wanted a, a test knowing what problems might be on there? Yeah. Exactly. Problems that you've already done and you've already had the answers to. That would be awesome. So we'll do that tomorrow. Ten points. I might start just doing that once a week or something. Kind of give you a, give you a chance to show me you're staying up with everything. And, and then if we lay your skills down, then theory gets a lot easier. Okay, so first thing, with your whiteboards, without talking to anybody, you tell me, what is a log? What is a log? It's two words. And then show me, I've got my glasses ready to go. Dang it, it's not my prescription glasses. You show me when you're ready. Yep. You cheater, you. Theoretically, a log, whenever I'm asking for a log, I'm asking for the exponent. A log is always the exponent. Period. End of story. Okay? So, if I say something like this, log base 2 of 8, what is that? That is 3. That is the exponent that takes to that power to get 8. 
okay? So, log base P of Q equals X. Write what that means. Write what that means. Should have woke to my glasses. Okay. Um, what if I say this? Um, 12, no, let's go like this. 11 to the third equals 1, 3, 3, 1. Rewrite that as a logarithm. Watching at home, it'd be the log base 11 of 1331 equals 3. Okay? So now, tell me what the log of 10,000 would be. So now, some of you guys might, might, might have thought, oh my gosh, the, the base is gone. There is no base there. That's a 10. Does anybody remember what that's called when the base is 10? Common log. It's a common log. Everything we do is in base 10. Any idea why we do everything in base 10? 10 is easy to count. The only reason that 10 is easy to count is because we use base 10. If we would have used base 8, base 8 would have been easier for us. If we would have used base 8, well then 6 plus 6 would give us 14. And we would go, yeah, duh. Okay. Why do we use base 10? There's a great reason. I mean, I have. you guys can't think of any reason why we use base 10? Yes. Count the zeros? What? We have 10 fingers. If we would have had a different number of fingers, we would have had a different base. Okay? If we would have had a, because actually, let's, let's, let's talk number theory here just a little bit. Okay? This is the stuff that I really enjoy. If I could just picture what some things we might do second semester would be, just kind of neat stuff like this. If we would have eight fingers, put your caps on your pens for all. We won't need them for a little bit, okay? If we would have eight fingers, our count would be like this. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What would come after seven? What comes after nine? Ten. Ten. What does ten mean? Ten means that we have filled up both of our hands once with none left over. So if we had eight, well actually let's think about it. How many digits do we have? We have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten is not a digit. Ten is two digits put together to make a bigger number. Okay? If we had eight fingers, how many digits would we have? Those eight and that's it. Eight doesn't exist. Nine doesn't exist. It would go back to 10. Why? Because what would that one mean? That one would mean that we filled up our hands once and we have zero left over. Bless you. 
Because think about it, if we go eight, nine, the next thing we go is, oh crap, oh crap, I'm gonna have my hands full, so I'm just gonna note that I've got my hands full once with zero left over, that's what 10 means. So now if I continue this nonsense, I go 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 20. Because now we filled up our hands twice, and we have zero left over. So 20 in eight finger land is actually 16 in 10 finger land. Can we go back to 10 finger land? Can we just stay at 10 finger <laughs> Well, it depends. There are places where you absolutely have to go to different bases. Huh? Yes. No, not not places in the world, but 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 um, but but professions where you have to think in different bases. Okay, if you are going to be really digging into computer code and stuff, that's all a different ballgame. If you're going to deal with, if you're going to dig into what really makes this thing the color it is on a computer screen, you're going to have to go into what's called base sixteen hexadecimal. But I'm going to challenge you guys with some other stuff here before we move on. Okay, so I think you guys are getting this figured out a little bit. I'm not going to count all this, but we'll do one more. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 30. Okay, I'm going to jump up here. I'm hoping half of you get it. 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 100. So what that means is Jesse was keeping track of this, how many times your fingers got full, and now you're keeping track of how many times his fingers got full. So 100 means hers has been filled up eight times, yours has been filled up eight times, and you're keeping track of that, and there's nothing left over. Okay? So now, let's challenge this. On your whiteboard, show me what, if you had four fingers. I want you to write down the first ten numbers if you only had four fingers. There is no such thing as four. Oh, crap. Like in four digits. Oh, ten. So you're closest. So Jesse, being the overachiever that he is, win a couple extra. I mean, he's a catch, man. Um, so one, two, three, ten. Because remember, what does ten mean? Ten means I filled up my hands once. I got no le none left over. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, twenty. Okay. Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, thirty. Okay. Keep counting from there. Do another 10. Start at 30. This is stuff we did in seventh grade in my math program. It was really got you to understand what was going on now. Oh, oh, oh. So here we go, 31, 32, 33, 100, 101, 102, 103, 110, okay, okay, so now I can ask you this question, let's see, think about this, in four finger land, what is three plus three? What is it? Twelve. Twelve. Why? Okay. Good, because you counted it out. You think about it. 
If you had 3 plus 3, you would have filled up your four fingers how many times? Once. How many left over? Two. Two. Keep control of that. <laughs> okay, now, now let's challenge you. Let's go, let's go less fingers. You have two fingers. All you have is a finger on each hand. I love stuff like this. This is just like, this is my dream type of day. No. There is, how many digits do you have to choose from? Ten minutes left. Zero and one. That's it. There are no threes. There are no twos. There are no fours. All you have is zero and one. Keep going. Let's go to let's 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 count out like several of them. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Nope. There's no twos. You can't use twos! Oh wait! It goes... Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> you can't use twos! Can I see yours? Yes sir! Here's what we got. Zero. One. Now if I add one more, my fingers are going to be filled up, so I gotta go to the next column. One. Zero left over. Then I go 11, 100, 101, 1,000, 1,001, okay? So now I could go down the wormhole, I could go like another hour on this because there's so many different, there's so much rich mathematics here. But what I want you, what I, what I want to share with you guys, I forget whose this is, okay. Next. Um, that's called binary. What uses binary? Computers. Computers. You're see, you, all of your digital music is binary. It's ones and zeros. That's all it is. Ones and zeros. Just a whole ton of ones and zeros. Okay. That's why, like your sound hound, where you're you're you're, you're, you're sound searching, where you can hold it up to a song, and it, and it'll tell you what song it is. It's just turning that back into ones and zeros and looking for a, a pattern to match another thing in its memory that has the same ones and zeros, and that's what it's doing, okay? Now, this one, this one might be more of a challenge. Caps on your pens for a while. So, let's, first of all, let's say that instead of 10 fingers, we had 16. Okay, so we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now we don't have enough digits that we've created to express all of our 16 different fingers. So we need to come up with more. Yeah, a lot of times they'll use A, B, C, D, E, and F. But we're going to have more fun than that. Okay? So what we need is we need five more, six more symbols and words that don't sound like each other or look like anything else. Triangle. Triangle, okay. What do you want to call that? What? Delta. Okay. Okay, we can. You don't have to use things that, are, that exist, but yeah, that'll work. So now I got 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, Delta. Come on, I need some more. Smiley face. That's going to suck to write over and over and over again. Um, and I don't want to use something that has so many syllables. So we'll just go like this. We'll say that's... Uh, smile. Smile. Nine, nine uh, delta smile. Okay. Let's do the other one. Dwarf. Okay, we better start doing the delta. Smile, Dorf. We got three more to go. A circle? Oh, we can't use circle again. No, 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 no. 